Hello guys, welcome to REO's Financial Accounting and Reporting Review. So for this video lecture, we will discuss a brand new topic. So we will discuss book value per share. Okay, so another brand new topic na naman and another super daling topic. Okay, so sir, what is book value per share? So by the way, ang lecture natin for this topic is good only for one video kasi maikli lang naman yung discussion ng concept regarding this topic. So after this one, we will apply everything to our exercises. So later on, we will answer four exercises. Okay, so let us go back to our discussion. Sir, what is book value per share? So book value per share represents the amount that each share will receive when the entity undergo liquidation. So I'll repeat, when we say book value per share, it represents the amount per share that will be received if an entity is under liquidation. Kaya nga, ang book value per share, napakadaling computein kung ang company ay nag issue lang ng one class of share. Okay? Kapag one class of share, pag sinabing one class, isang class lang. Okay? Ordinary shares ang kanyang ini-issue. So kung one class of share lang ang ini-issue ng company, madali lang computein ang book value per share. Okay, so itago ko na lang siya sa pangalan na BVPS uh, para mas maikli. So, ang computation ng book value per share kung one class of share lang is simply total she total she divided by your outstanding shares or number of outstanding shares. Uh, yun lang, outstanding ha? Outstanding shares. Uh, Kaya ba napaka-simple? Kaya nga tinawag na book value per share eh. Pag sinabing book value, it represents the amount or the amount of the shareholder's equity per books. So yung amount ng total she na nakarecord sa libro. Tapos i-distribute lang natin siya sa number of out standing shares. Di ba napaka-simple na computation ng book value per share? Pero ingat lang, ingat lang, for book value per share computation, I'll repeat, for book value per share computation, number one, subscription receivable is not deducted. Subscription receivable is not deducted. Uh, kasi alam naman natin, na, lalo na kapag ang problem ay silent, ang subscription receivable is treated as a deduction from your contributed capital. Tama ba? So, kumbaga ang effect niyan, bumababa ang she. Pero for book value per share computation purposes, hindi po siya dinededuct. Pangalawa, for book value per share computation purposes, Treasury shares are considered retired. Treasury shares are considered retired. Okay, so again na itong dalawang assumption na to, gagawin mo lang kung nagko-compute ka ng book value per share. Okay, you will assume number one, that subscription receivable is not deducted. And another one, treasury shares are assumed to be retired for the computation of book value per share. Hindi mo walang ka-challenge-challenge. Ah, kaya pala ganun ang definition niya, sir. Ang definition niya, yung amount na matatanggap ng shareholder per share, assuming the entity will undergo liquidation. E di ba, kapag nag-liquidate ng corporation o entity, so definitely magsasauli na siya ng investment eh. Tama ba? So ang nire-represent ng book value per share, yung value ng investment ng mga investor sa point of view ng corporation, sa point of view ng records natin. Okay, so yun yung nire-represent ng book value per share. Ah, wala sir, totally no-brainer. Napaka-simple na. Okay, na yun sir, hindi pa. Kasi mas madalas, hindi lumalabas yung one class. Kasi walang ka-challenge-challenge yan eh. Tama, ang madalas na lumalabas, paano 
kung two classes of share ang ini-issue ng corporation. Pag sinabi natin two classes, one, nandyan yung ordinary shares, two, nandyan ang preferred shares. So, ibig sabihin, kapag two classes of shares ang ini-issue ng corporation, ang book value per share ay kinocompute separately for ordinary shares and preferred shares. I'll repeat, if an entity issues two classes of shares, book value per share is computed separately for ordinary shares and preferred shares. So, ang mangyayari, yung total she natin, Okay, yung total she ay i-allocate natin into preference shares and ordinary shares. So, magkocompute ka separately ng book value per share nila. Eh, paano kinocompute yun, sir? Madali lang. Okay, to compute the book value per share, ilagay ko na dito, ah, book value per share. Ito, book value per share. Okay, ang computation ng book value per share is total preference total preference shareholders equity divided by number of outstanding preference shares ito naman this is total ordinary total ordinary shareholders equity divided by the number of outstanding ordinary shares. Hindi ba parang pareho lang kanina sa one class? Tama, pareho-pareho. Ewan ko kung hindi mo napansin. Tama, pareho-pareho. Ang pinagkaiba lang nila, yung numerator. Na instead, na total she, what we did is we allocated your total she into preference shares and ordinary shares. And then yung denominator, common sense kung bakit nagbago. Ito, preference shares, kasi ang kinocompute mo, book value per share na preference share. Ito, ordinary share, kasi ang kinocompute mo, book value per share ng ordinary shares. Wala. Totally no-brainer, sir. And take note, take note, when allocating your total sheet into your classes of shares, meaning into preference and ordinary, okay, Gumagamit tayo ng concept known as residual equity theory. We are using the concept of residual equity theory. Okay, so ang ibig sabihin ng residual equity theory, sir? Kung bagay yung pinakamasakit na theory sa lahat eh. Yung akala mo, tira ka lang, pero mas malala pa pala. Kasi ikaw yung tira ng tira. Okay, ah, bakit tira ng tira, sir? Kasi imagine mo, ah, when we say equity as we define it under the conceptual framework, di ba equity is your residual interest in the assets of the corporation after deducting total liability. Tapos, meron pang salitang residual. E eh, ito by nature, residual na. Tapos, residual pa ulit. Ano pa naman yan? Di ba ang sakit nun? Tira ng tira. Ano ba naman yun, sir? Uh, sobrang sakit naman yan. Okay? After, after matira to, meron pa palang tira sa tira. Di ba? Mas meron, pang, meron pang mas masakala. So, what do we mean, sir, by residual equity theory? Actually, residual equity theory applies or pertains to the ordinary shares. Kasi ang concept is, when you are allocating the total shareholders' equity into preference and ordinary, syempre, obviously, merong preference o priority si preference shares. Tama, tinuro ko naman, I think, tinuro ko naman yan sa, sa shareholders' equity part 2 or part 1. Parang either sa, sa dalawang category na yon. Pero I think maliwanag ako na ang preference shares may priority sa ordinary shares. Kaya siya nagiging residual equity. Kasi silang dalawa parehong equity item eh. Tama ba? Ang problema, meron siyang priority over this one. Kaya ang dating, si ordinary shares ay treated as residual equity theory. Kasi merong priority si preference shares over ordinary shares. Ako sir, totally no-brainer. Di ba walang ka-challenge-challenge? Oh, by the way, by the way, So when we say total 
total preference share, ayan, ang computation ng total preference share is simply share capital or preference share capital plus preference subscribe share capital plus share. Okay? Plus share in excess over par. Okay? So again, pag sinabing preference shareholders equity, that is preference share capital plus pre preference subscribe share capital plus share in excess over par. How about total ordinary shareholders equity? So, to compute total ordinary shareholders equity, ang computation po niyan ay ordinary share capital plus ordinary subscribed share capital plus share plus share in excess over par. Ayan. Okay? So, sir, parang medyo hawig sila ng computation. Tama ba? So, ang mangyayari, di ba, I'll repeat. Ang total sheet natin, i-allocate into preference and ordinary. Di ba, ang total sheet, kung naalala mo, ang general component ng sheet ay share capital, subscribe share capital, share premium, retained earnings, tapos OCI, OCL. Tama ay ang share capital sa ka-subscribe share capital, you can identify it in or sorry, you can segregate it into preference and ordinary. Tama ba yung dalawang yan eh? Yung share capital sa ka-subscribe share capital, pwede mong i-segregate into ordinary and preference. Ang mahirap ma-segregate yung share premium, yung RE, sa yung OCI, OCL. Yung tatlong yon yung tinatawag na excess over par. Okay, yung pala sila yung sila pala yung excess over par sir. So wait lang, aburahin ko lang muna para mas maintindihan mo yung gusto kong mangyari dito sa pag-allocate ng total sheet. Ah, kasi kung 1 plus lang, wala ka challenge-challenge itong book value per share. Nagkakaroon na ng counting challenge, maka 1% lang. Kapag two classes of shares ang ini-issue mo. Okay? So, ano ba yung gusto mong i-point out dito, sir? Sabi ko nga kanina, sabi ko nga kanina, ang total sheet, okay, ang point natin under residual equity theory, i-allocate natin into preference and ordinary. Kasi separately o separate ang computation ng kanilang book value per share. E di ba generally, ang total sheet, ang components niyan ay share capital, subscribe share capital, share premium, retained earnings, at saka OCI, OCL. Tama ba? Yan ang general, again, ang general component ng shareholders' equity. Itong dalawang to is always measured at par. Tama ba? Tinuro ko sa inyo sa shareholders' equity yan. Yan ay always measured at par. Kaya nga kung titignan mo, silang tatlo yung tinatawag na excess over par. Bakit sila tinawag na excess over par, sir? Kasi kung iisipin natin, silang tatlo is not measured at par value. In other words, silang tatlo yung component ng sheet na hindi measured at par value. Kaya tinawag siyang excess over par. Silang tatlo ay i-allocate natin into preference shares and ordinary shares. Wait lang ha, buray pa lang muna ito. ay i-allocate ito into preference shares and ordinary shares. Ito, hindi mo na kaya i-allocate kasi nga at par value. You can allocate it directly into preference shares and ordinary shares. Kaya nga, di ba sa formula kanina, nung pag-compute ng total preference shareholders equity sa katur total ordinary shareholders equity, naka-specifically identified itong dalawang to. Di ba mayroong kanina sa formula na tinatawag na share 
in excess over par. So, yung excess over par, silang tatlo yon. Na ang gagawin, ahatiin mo sa kanilang dalawa, pero meron tayong dalawang consideration sa paghati ng excess over par. Kaya nga, kung papansinin mo, after mong ma-allocate yan into preference and ordinary, yung amount na ma-allocate sa kanilang dalawa, yun yung tinatawag na share in excess over par. Kasi yung share capital sa subscribe share capital, you can directly allocate it into preference and ordinary. Kasi merong distinction. Ito, dahil walang distinction, we need to allocate, we need, O still, we need to allocate it into preference and ordinary shares, pero meron lang tayong dalawang considerations. Okay, sarang so, yung dalawang considerations natin in allocating this one, in allocating excess over par. Number one, yung liquidation value, liquidation value ng preference shares. Uh, okay, I'll repeat, I'll repeat. In allocating excess over par, we will still apply the concept of residual equity theory. Kaya nga, in terms of consideration, mapapansin mo, puro preference share ang pinag-uusapan natin sa consideration. Kasi nga, ang rule, i-allocate muna sa kanya, pag may tira, ang yun, kapag may tira, mapupunta yon sa ordinary shares. So, kumbaga, sir, parang hawig siya nung discussion natin sa preferred dividends last time. Nalala mo yung sa retained earnings na topic natin? Di ba yung kapag, kapag ang entity nag-declare ng dividends, ang unang binabayaran si preference shares. Pag may tira, babayaran si ordinary shares. Ganon din yung concept halos sa book value per share. Yun nga lang, hindi dividends ang pinag-uusapan natin. Hindi dividends yung hinahati natin sa kanilang dalawa. Ang hinahati natin sa kanilang dalawa, yung tinatawag na excess over par. Ah, okay, so again, I'll repeat ha. Same concept, residual equity theory. So, uunahin natin i-consider yung mga items related to preference shares. Pero this time, ang hinahati po natin, hindi dividends, but rather excess over par. Okay, so I hope clear ako dito. Pero same concept or same strategy will apply. Kasi parehong gumagamit yan ng residual equity theory. Well, anyways, so liquidation value ng preference shares. Obviously, pag sinabing liquidation value, ito yung amount or value na ibabayad sa preference shareholders upon liquidation. Which is generally, take note that generally, and if the problem is silent, liquidation value is par value. Kaya ang problema kasi minsan, May mga instances na ang liquidation value is higher than the par value. Eh kung iisipin natin, yung initial allocation natin sa preference shares, lahat at par value eh. Ano ibig sabihin ng initial allocation? Di ba ang unang laman ng preference share itong dalawa? Share capital, sa subscribe share capital. E eh, pareho at par value yan eh. Tama ba? Kaya nga yung excess over par, babawasan natin nung tinatawag na liquidation premium. Ayan, lumalabas lang ang liquidation premium if the problem stated na yung liquidation value o yung agreed value na babayaran sa preference share upon liquidation ay mas mataas sa par value. So, pag mas mataas sa par value yan, that's the time na nagkakaroon ng liquidation premium. At yung liquidation premium na yan, i-allocate yan sa preference share. Siyempre, ibabawas yan sa excess over par. I'll repeat, i-allocate ko into, into preference and ordinary. Ang unang consideration, liquidation premium. At lumalabas lang to kapag mas malaki to sa par value. Bakit ibibigay sa preference shares yun? Kasi yung napag-usapan nilang amount, mas malaki sa par. E ang naka-allocate sa preference share, initially, nung wala pa to, par value pa lang. So, kailangan ilagay siya sa preference shares. Pangalawang kinukonsider. Okay, pangalawang kinukonsider ay yung kung anong uri ba sila ng preference shares. And in terms of types, of preference share. Dito ko na lang ilagay ha, kasi hindi na po pa siya eh. Okay, di ba? In terms of types of preference shares, meron tayong apat na types. 
Una, yung tinatawag na cumulative. Pangalawa, yung tinatawag na non-cumulative. Pangatlo, yung tinatawag na participating. At pangapat, yung tinatawag na non-participating. Ayan. Take note, in terms of cumulative or non-cumulative, ang pakialam natin o ang concern natin dito ay yung tinatawag na dividend in arrears. Pag sinabing dividend in arrears, ito yung dividends that are still unpaid as of the liquid as of the day kung kailan ka nagko-compute ng book value per share. So I'll repeat, pag sinabing dividend in arrears, ito yung unpaid dividends up to the date na ikaw ay nagko-compute ng book value per share. Na kapag cumulative, syempre naalala mo to. Pag cumulative ang entitlement mo ay lahat ng unpaid from the start. Kasi 'di ba kapag cumulative ang preference shares, nag-accumulate yung mga hindi nabayaran na dividends sa preference shares. Pero pag non-cumulative, ang babayaran mo lang yung ngayong taon lang. Kasi yung mga hindi nabayaran nung nakarang taon, forfeited na yon Hindi siya mag-accumulate up to this date or up to the date na nagko-compute ka ng book value per share. Pero again ha, ingat lang. Ang kinoconcern, ang, ang kinoconsider natin, dividend in arrears. If the problem stated na walang dividend in arrears, then wala kang pakailang. Ah, eh hindi siya kinocompute na kasi na sinabi ng problem, walang dividend in arrears. So wala po ay tatong cumulative sa kanan cumulative. So alalahanin mo no nagdi-discuss tayo ng preferred dividends, 'di ba? After mo ma-consider to, generally, kung meron pang balance nung excess over par, lahat 'yan ma-allocate na sa ordinary shares. Assuming yung preference shares ay nan participating. Okay, ulitin ko, parang hindi mo na-gets ito. Sa, sabi ko nga kanina, pareho lang to ng concept ng preferred dividends. Ang kaibahan lang, last time, sa FAR 29, if I'm not mistaken sa numbering, sa FAR 29, ang ina-allocate natin preferred dividends. Dito ang ina-allocate natin yung silang tatlo, yung excess over par, which is yung liquidation premium, ibabawas dito, ibibigay sa preference shares. Pangalawang ibabawas dyan at ibibigay sa preference shares kung merong dividend in arrears. At yung ibabawas ng dividend in arrears, depende na kung cumulative o non-cumulative. So ibabawas yan dyan, ibibigay din sa preference shares. Kasi entitlement nila yun eh. Okay? Eh ang problema, ang problema, kapag participating pa ang preference shares, kung meron pang balance sa excess over par, generally dapat sa ordinary shares yun eh. Makikihati pa si preference shares. Tama ba? Kaya nga siya tinawag na participating eh. Nagpa-participate siya. Okay? Kung meron pang balance sa excess over par. And again, just like sa discussion natin sa preferred dividends, di ba bago siya makihati, bibigyan mo muna ng basic dividends si ordinary shares para fair enough. Tama kasi ang, ang, ang swapang mo naman masyado, kapag may balanse, makikihati ka kagal. E samantalang bago mag-arrive sa balanse, meron pa ng portion na kinuha dito. So to be fair enough, bibigyan mo rin muna siya ng portion dito represented by the basic dividend. Di ba parehong-pareho ng computation nun sa previous discussion natin regarding yung allocation ng dividends into preference and ordinary shares. But this time, we are not allocating dividends, but rather excess over par. But same concept applies. Okay, walang pa-challenge-challenge pa rin. Diba? Kasi kapag wala, kapag non-participating, diba? Anong turo ko sa inyo last time? Pag non-participating, pag may balance, sa ordinary shares na yun. Pero pag participating, pag may balance, makikihati pa siya. Pero bago siya makihati, bibigyan mo muna siya ng basic dividend. And take note, just like doon sa diniscuss natin last time, 
Paano sir? Kung merong two or more classes ng preference shares na participating, anong rate or participation rate ang ibibigay natin kay ordinary shares? Di ba ang usapan natin yung lowest participation rate? Ah, ay kasi for example, may kita mo merong 10% preference shares, merong 12% preference shares. Kung pareho silang participating, ang ibibigay o ang gagamitin nating rate to compute the basic dividend of your ordinary shares, sa example ko, 10%. Kasi yun yung lower or lowest rate. Pero, ingat lang. Kung dalawa yan, 10% saka 12%, pero yung 10% hindi participating, kung hindi participating yon 12% ang gagamitin natin, even though higher yon Kasi ang usapan, if there are two or more participating preference shares, So, kung hindi participating yan, hindi, tanggal sa usapan yan. Nakatulad sa example ko, kahit na mas mababa yung 10%, dahil hindi participating, 12% ang gagamitin mo to compute the basic dividend of ordinary shares. ba? Diba? Totally no-brainer. And last one, last one, if the problem is silent, you assume na ang preference shares ay non-cumulative and non-participating. ba? Diba? Walang kahirap-hirap, sir. Yan na ba yun, sir? Wala. Totally no-brainer. Lalo na kapag nagsagot na tayo ng exercises, marirealize mo na oo nga, tama si sir. Halos kapareho lang pala ito ng computation nung sa basic, sa basic to it, nung preferred dividends. Ang pinagkaiba, ang ina-allocate lang natin this time, ay hindi dividends, but rather excess over part. Okay? So, this will conclude our discussion regarding book value per share. So, may kilang kasi konti lang naman ang concept nito eh. So, after you watch this video, you can now answer the exercises behind our materia. So, meron tayong exercise 1 until exercise 4 na sasagutan. At i-discuss yan on the next video lectures. Okay, so again, thank you so much for listening. See you on the next video lecture and God bless you all.